four years ago, African Americans came out in record numbers, propelling Barack Obama to victory in the 2008 U.S. presidential elections. A groundbreaking moment in American history. But since his election, unemployment in communities of color has not decreased. In fact, it's gone up to twice the national average. More than ever before, young black men are being stopped and even killed by police. And his support of same-sex marriage has offended members of America's black churches. Some of us have taken his statement as a declaration of political war. After helping Barack Obama make history in 2008, is there widespread buyer's remorse in the U.S. black community? Or will racial and historical bonds overcome what some say has been an outright abandonment of his most loyal constituency? I'm Gary Anthony Ramsey. On this week's edition of In Focus, we look at Barack Obama and the black vote. Will he repeat or will they reject? Of the greatest nation on earth. Estimated 10,000 people. President Obama conducted this crowd. I will never forget who this victory truly belongs to. It belongs to you. tonight, because of what we did on this day, in this election, at this defining moment, change has come to America. When Barack Obama takes the oath of office, hundreds of thousands of African Americans brave the bone-chilling cold, clinging to his every word of hope and optimism. And why a man whose father less than 60 years ago might not have been served at a local restaurant can now stand before you to take a most sacred oath. It was off the hook. All over the world, it was off the hook. The idea that a black man can rise to the presidency in America, I think black people were elated, you know, and it was just excitement that you couldn't even describe in words. The election of President Barack Obama was, in fact, from our view, a fulfillment of the dream of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr where everybody would be treated with some uh, standard of equality and where race or uh, uh, skin color would not be uh, a point of judgment. A very powerful speaker, um, cast the, the, the ideas of, of a visionary and gave us hope that um, somehow we could put the past, you know, racism behind us and that we were all ready to elect the best person for the job, the person that could move us forward. A black man as president, many thought they would never see the day. I thought that he could bring that uh, message back, but I also, he had that image that would encourage people, you know, to have a dream and pursue it without feeling as though there are others that would, you know, stop them from reaching that goal. At the start of his presidency, many blacks believed that finally their prevailing concerns and issues would receive a front row seat in the halls of power. What's happened in the African-American community since then has even some of his most loyal supporters scratching their heads. We had a Democratic president who was black. We had a Democratic House and a Democratic Senate for the first two years of the Obama administration. But it didn't trickle down to Harlem, to East New York, to Brownsville, to the Bronx to black and Latino communities across this country.
less than a year after Obama takes office. Unemployment spikes to a whopping 10.2%, leaving more than 17 million people out of work. But even more alarming for the African-American community, the rate is nearly 17%, and that's not including an additional 20% of blacks considered underemployed, meaning they are working, but not making enough to survive. My story is I'm not working. I haven't been working for about a year or more. Went to school to get my building maintenance trade, OSHA, uh, computer skills and all that, and I'm out here trying to find work. Many Obama supporters express frustration, declaring that these horrific numbers should have been given more attention. Instead, they were given practically none. When the country was talking about 8.3 percent unemployment, we were unemployed to the tune of 15 percent, and our youth 40, 50 percent. When they were talking about poverty, 45 million Americans were in poverty. 25 million Americans needed food stamps. 23 million Americans are out of work. When you went to our neighborhoods, you're talking about the South Bronx, 44% poverty. That's higher than the poverty in Egypt that caused the uprising. Uh, unemployment is still very high in our communities. Um, poverty is uh, increased in our communities. Uh, disproportionate incarceration of African-Americans has increased in most states. Um, high school dropout rate, we have the highest high school dropout rate. So there are a lot of uh, things uh, that still have to be done. There are a lot of issues that still have to be addressed. Take off your bedroom slippers. Put on your marching shoes. Shake it off. Stop complaining. Stop grumbling. Stop crying. We are going to press on. We've got work to do. But has any of that work been done? The answer is unclear to many, leaving a once hopeful community divided and somewhat conflicted. Those are not presidential terms to be telling the American people who are hurting, who are on unemployment, who are trying to make ends meet. But we did have hope and optimism that, that somehow this, this person could be a spokesperson, could be a voice could truly be a champion for the cause, and he was not. While others maintain the finger should be pointed at themselves and not the first black president. We have to have more uh, of an entrepreneurial spirit ourselves. We have to encourage our young people to stay in school. We have to do something about the poverty in our communities. Critics point to another example of what they view as Obama's disconnect with the black community. Earlier this year, he tells a reporter that, quote, my general view has been consistent throughout, which is that I want all businesses to succeed. I want all Americans to have opportunity. I'm not the president of black America. I'm the president of the United States of America. For many, the sentiment was disappointing at best. But when it came to us, I'm not here for black America. I am here for the United States of America. And I have serious problems with that. He started this misnomer called race neutral, because when you say race neutral or universalism, that means white. That means white policies. That means white interest. There was an opportunity if President Obama had governed as the kind of candidate he ran as. Instead, in my opinion, but also the opinions of many other men's people in this country, he governed, has governed, as someone who wants to very much grow the size of government and who believes it's a philosophical matter, that's the best approach. I'm very disturbed actually more and more by the president and by the presidency. A lot of us, especially African Americans, we only view the president in terms of the race aspect, but I think economically uh, there's a lot of what would appear to me to be conspiratorial uh, agendas involved. Why are people still losing their houses? And we help them out, but why are people still and die need. There's people still out here losing their homes, have to give up their cars, can't afford to pay their bills. I just don't believe uh, that the average African American expects the President of the United States uh, to um, be the exclusive uh, province of just the African American community. I, I think we see a little bit beyond, uh, we, we don't take our eyes off our own needs, but we also see the needs of others. There are still many minorities who believe that any ineffectiveness in Obama's actions are a direct result of resentment and the hatred of the color of his skin. I think he's been treated horribly. I am a Republican, and I do not agree with the way that my party has uh, treated 
him as an individual. I do not believe that uh, they have given him the benefit of the doubt. I ask you today, what are you going to do? How are you going to take this country back? The President of the United States, Barack Obama, is destroying the United States economy. We're going to use some common sense and we're going to take back our country. When they say we want to take back our country and bring it back, back to what? Back to what? Put them blacks back in their place. That's what that means. It is totally racist. And, and if you talk to the Secret Service, uh, they will tell you there have been more threats on President Barack Obama that, and all the other presidents cognitively. I think there's a lot of hatred that's been built up toward uh, President Barack Obama uh, for political reasons. And I think sometimes people use race, play the race card as a way to excite people. Racism is thick, it's incredible. Uh, most of this that's happening to him from the right is racist because they can't handle the fact that a black man is in that powerful position. I don't blame Obama at all for this because, you know, this is, this is like from Bush. Everything happened from him and it just boiled on Obama and I think everybody's too hard on him, you know? So he's only, he can only do what he can. So we have a tendency to say, we're, we're going to give him a pass. We're going to give him a pass. But us giving him a pass is killing us. Giving the president a pass. It's a phrase Obama's detractors say suggests forgiving and even forgetting the notion that he has forsaken his African-American base, the very people that launched him to victory in 2008. If black people don't turn out in the numbers that they did, which was record mm -hmm. for uh, three and a half years mm -hmm. ago, could he lose this election? Yes. Jobs is bad, you know, people's out of work. You know, it's just, you know, it's, it's horrible. You know, like, we're really in, it's not just New York, it's all over the world. Crime is high now. People shooting each other. Another front that has many African Americans troubled is how they have been treated by the U.S. justice system over the last three and a half years. Just weeks after Obama's election, 22-year-old Oscar Grant is killed on the platform of a California train station by police. Grant is unarmed and handcuffed when he's gunned down. The first of what would become dozens of cases of African Americans being shot and killed by cops, all since Obama took office. You would expect when a black man is the president of the United States, a black man is the attorney general of the United States of America, and a black woman is America's ambassador to the United Nations, you would expect to see far less of this type of unjustified violence um, than you're seeing. Our hopes were raised uh, four years ago when Obama was elected and hoping that um, there would be some change in the quality of life and the social condition in the African American community. There have been some changes, but not enough. the abuse of people of color because it goes unseen and unheard and rarely litigated and rarely prosecuted. Uh, it appears that that is an easy target and something that I think those in law enforcement uh, easily move away from, easily see it as part of their job, easily see their oppression as something that is run of the mill, run of the mill in a daily process. Still at the top of American headlines is the controversial killing of teenager Trayvon Martin gunned down by self-proclaimed neighborhood watchman George Zimmerman. Trayvon is unarmed, but the issue divides many along racial lines. President Obama offers a personal reflection. You know, if I had a son, he'd look like Trayvon. And, um, you know, I think they are right to expect that all of us as Americans uh, are going to take this with the seriousness it deserves and that we're going to get to the bottom of exactly what happened. But his words appear to have little impact. Across the country, the number of young black men getting stopped and searched without probable cause is on the increase, reaching numbers in the hundreds of thousands. While being very aggressive in its so-called drug war policy, which imprisons thousands of black men every year, on the issue of stop and frisk, 
the Obama Justice Department is silent. Only time we've ever made progress in this country is when we were race specific, when we targeted us. Civil rights was race specific, was targeted for us. Obama abandoned that. Despite what critics say are the dismal statistics surrounding the African American community during the Obama era, some American lawmakers charge that many minorities will invoke a double standard on election day. Emmanuel Cleaver, the chairman of the Congressional Black Caucus, tells a reporter, quote, With 14% unemployment, if we had a white president, we'd be marching around the White House. However, I don't think the Irish would do that to the first Irish president, or Jews would do that to the first Jewish president. But we're human, and we have a sense of pride about the president. The president knows we are going to act in deference to him in a way we wouldn't to someone white. But the most pronounced wedge between Barack Obama and his base has become the issue of same-sex marriage. After years of stating that he believed the definition of marriage to be the union between a man and a woman, he reversed his position. I think same-sex couples should be able to get married. People I know, people come up to me, are saying that they don't support this, they don't like this, they're disappointed with the president, and they plan to stay home. On the radio airwaves, blacks are much more vocal about their displeasure with Obama's position. The thing about President Obama is he said a whole lot of stuff that's negative as far as Christian. If I were to vote today, I'd vote for Romney. President Obama does not care about black people in America. Why do you say that? Because he hasn't done anything for them since he's been there. It even has some pastors calling for what was unthinkable four years ago, for parishioners to stay home rather than exercise their constitutional right to vote. Voters need to know whether they have a friend or in a sense an enemy to an institution that God has ordained. Some of us have taken his statements as a declaration of political war. I know in most of the religious circles that I travel in, you know, people were disappointed by his statement. They were disappointed by the NAACP, and it's caused great angst in, in our circles and in our community. Uh, so we have to figure out exactly how we are going to express our points of view at the, at the, at the ballot, in the ballot box. With just a few weeks remaining before the election, Polls show Barack Obama and his opponent Mitt Romney separated by just a few percentage points. In 2012, however, gone is the euphoria that swept an entire nation. Their desire to be on the right side of history is over because they voted for the African Americans. So now they're saying, I'm going to vote for a pocketbook issue. We actually need to come out in higher numbers than we did last time. I don't think uh, people in the African American community uh, are any less uh, enthusiastic. I think people are worried about uh, the future. The blame game is certain to continue. Some see it as Obama's fault. I really do not think that he has earned a second term, in my opinion. While others see him as a man shouldering an enormous burden, opposed at every turn. But I think most African Americans are aware that the uh, sum and plight of the circumstance, the economic, the socioeconomic circumstance and the conditions of African Americans uh, is going to take a long-term uh, resolution. And the resolution will not only come from the government, the resolution has to come from our community itself. But whether hopeful, disappointed, or disenchanted with the president's performance, most agree the current state of affairs still leaves much to be desired. The question is, will today's conditions steer black voters away from the man who once gave them so much hope? I'm hopeful. I think one more term, I think he will do good, but it only depends what's going to happen after that. But like I said, there's only so much he can do. Black people are very smart, very intelligent. Who does Donald Trump want us to support? Mitt Romney? Him? <laughs> Who's the solution? Trump? Romney? Black people aren't stupid. I think that the, the separation from the black religious community has been uh, striking. And will it provide enough of a, of a gap to allow those people to come out for the other candidate, I don't know. 
I, I, I really don't know. Um, I think there's a lot more work he has to do with regard to uh, the job creation area as well as education. He has done well. Um, I think he's done better than most people give him credit for. But clearly, when you are up against, you know, a, a opposition party, if you will, that does not want to sit down at the table and negotiate, um, it makes it very difficult. Not only will uh, President Obama get the black vote because of his leadership and what he's stood for in America and in the world, but I also think he's going to get the black vote because the opposition to President Obama has not embraced uh, the aspirations of, as well as they could have, as uh, uh, for African Americans and other minorities in the United States. So I think people will be voting to move forward. And one more question. Even if Barack Obama gets reelected, will this mean change for African Americans? But I do believe he's going to edge out a victory. The question is, will his win be our win? Will his victory mean victory for the black community. I think that uh, the next four years of President Barack Obama, he's going to take the gloves off. I think he had the gloves on in the first four years out of necessity. It is painful to me personally. I don't know if I'm going to have my grandchildren or even my children now do better than I have. I mean, I did okay, but in the, in the way the country is now in this city and state, I'm not so sure that their next generation is going to do better, which is what our our edict is supposed to be. We're supposed to make sure that the next generation does better than the one prior. And I, I would just caution uh, the rise of cynicism. I would caution the rise of hopelessness. I would caution that this is not a time for us to uh, make a final judgment on uh, the administration of President uh, Barack Obama.